What if everything you think is real isn't? What if the world around you, the people, the objects, the stars above and the ground beneath was not the solid, dependable reality it appears to be, but something far more mysterious? Modern science and ancient wisdom, though separated by thousands of years, may be pointing to the same truth. That reality itself is an illusion. This is the story of quantum field theory and the Vedic concept of Maya. Two seemingly distant ideas that, when brought together, whisper a startling secret. The universe is not what it seems, and neither are you. Let's start with science. In quantum field theory, everything in the universe is made not of tiny particles, but of invisible, fluctuating fields. These fields are the true fabric of reality. An electron isn't a speck of matter, it's a ripple in the electron field, a photon, just a blip in the electromagnetic field. Even so-called empty space is alive with invisible energy fields constantly interacting and fluctuating. At this fundamental level, nothing is solid, nothing is fixed. The deeper physicists look, the more the material world dissolves into vibration, into patterns of probability. What we experience as things are just temporary patterns of energy, emerging and disappearing within a vast invisible ocean. It sounds almost poetic, but it's not poetry, it's physics. Now, let's go back. Not decades, not centuries, but thousands of years. In ancient India, long before the language of atoms or fields, the sages of the Vedas described something strikingly similar. They called it Maya, the illusion, the cosmic dream. In Vedic philosophy, especially Advaita Vedanta, the physical world is not ultimately real. It is a projection, a shimmering veil that conceals the true essence of existence, Brahman, pure, undivided consciousness. The sages taught that what you see, hear and touch is not the final truth. The world of name and form is Maya, a mirage cast upon the infinite. Only consciousness itself is real, eternal, unchanging. Does it sound familiar? Both quantum physics and Vedantic wisdom suggest that the world is not as it appears. That beneath the forms, there is formlessness. Beneath the noise, silence. Beneath the many, the one. Here's where it gets even more intriguing. In quantum physics, the observer plays a crucial role. Particles behave differently depending on whether they're being observed. Until measurement happens, a particle exists in superposition in many states at once. Observation collapses the wave function. The act of looking brings the world into being. In Vedanta, this idea is echoed at an even deeper level. Here, it's not just that observation shapes reality, it's that consciousness itself is the source of all appearance. The universe arises within consciousness, not the other way around. The world is not out there. It's a dream within the self, and we are both the dreamer and the dreamed. And what does neuroscience say? Surprisingly, it agrees in its own way. Your brain doesn't see the world, it builds a model of it. A simulation based on sensory data, it fills in gaps. It filters out 99% of the information around you. It creates a reality that makes sense, not one that is fundamentally true. In essence, we live inside a neural illusion, a controlled hallucination crafted by the brain. This is psychological Maya, the mind weaving a private version of the world. And in altered states, through meditation, psychedelics, or deep introspection, this simulation can break down. When it does, people often report a feeling of profound unity, timelessness, and the dissolving of boundaries between self and world. Science is now mapping experiences that mystics described thousands of years ago. Quantum physics, Vedic wisdom, and neuroscience. Three paths, one insight, each tells us don't trust the surface, look deeper. The boundaries between self and world, between object and observer, begin to dissolve. What remains is one field, one infinite reality dancing in countless forms. So where does this leave us? Not lost, 
but liberated, the illusion, whether quantum or spiritual, is not a prison but a play, a dance, a canvas for experience, learning, awakening. You are not just a body or a mind or a separate being drifting in a cold universe. You are awareness itself, the field, the dancer and the dance, the dreamer waking up inside the dream. The universe isn't just out there, it's within you. And it's whispering a secret for those who choose to listen. You are not in the universe. The universe is in you. Let us now descend deeper beyond appearances and equations into the luminous web where Maya and quantum field theory intertwine. In this dance of illusion and emergence, we glimpse not separation, but an intricate unity where the ancient seer's veil of reality meets the modern physicist's vacuum teeming with potential. Both whisper of a world not fixed, but arising moment to moment from the play of fields, perception, and the infinite intelligence of the void. What if the illusion knows it's an illusion? What if the dream of the world, so vivid, so undeniable, is not just a veil, but a message? A puzzle, a mirror, a code waiting to be cracked. In this next chapter, we journey further, beyond the field, beyond Maya, into the strange symmetry between modern science, ancient wisdom, and the mystery of you. Because if reality is an illusion, why is it so precisely built? And who or what is dreaming it? Modern physics has begun to hint at something astonishing, that the universe is not just energetic, it's informational. At the frontier of quantum research, reality is being described not only in terms of fields, but as information processing. Some physicists now propose the universe behaves like a quantum computer, with particles as data bits and the laws of physics as its code. Every atom, every star, every cell in your body, all following hidden rules, a cosmic algorithm. This idea is not metaphor, it's math. And it raises a provocative question, if reality is information, who is the one decoding it? In the Vedas, the cosmos is not just illusion, but intelligent illusion. Maya isn't chaos, it's divine design, a conscious play woven by Ishvara, the cosmic intelligence. Here, the universe is Leela, a dance, a game, a sacred simulation. And you, you're not merely a player, you are the witness, Saxon, who watches the unfolding dream, even as you appear within it. The sages said, Brahman is real, the world is illusion, but the world is Brahman, seen through the eyes of forgetfulness. What appears as matter is mind in disguise. In science, one mystery remains completely unsolved, consciousness. Where does it come from? Why does the brain generate it at all? No neural mechanism can explain why red looks red, or why you feel joy or sorrow or awe. This is known as the hard problem of consciousness, and yet, in Vedanta, this isn't a mystery. It's the starting point. Consciousness is not produced by the brain. It is primary. The brain, the body, the world, they all arise within consciousness like ripples on a vast, silent ocean. As modern theories like integrated information theory begin to echo, consciousness may be a fundamental property of the universe, not a product, but a principle. Here's the twist. If the world is a simulation, then so are you. Psychology now confirms what mystics claimed. The self is not a thing, but a process. Your identity is a story, crafted by memory, culture, emotion, and brain chemistry. Neuroscience reveals that there is no central you in the brain, no control room, no single place where you reside. What we call self is a narrative hologram, constantly updated by sensory input and belief. This is ahamkara in Vedanta, the ego function that claims ownership. I am this. But beyond ahamkara is the true self, the Atman, pure awareness, untouched by change. When the ego dissolves, whether through meditation, psychedelics, trauma or grace, what remains is not nothing. What remains is everything. We live in a universe of opposites. Wave and particle, mind and matter, self and other, real and illusion. And yet more and more science and spirituality suggest these dualities are not enemies, they are reflections. 
Complementarity in quantum mechanics shows that particles behave as waves or matter depending on how we look. The Vedas said the same, the one becomes many, the many return to the one. Light is both a particle and a wave. You are both a person and the cosmos. The secret isn't choosing one side, the secret is seeing through the illusion of separation. So what now? What do we do with this knowledge that the world is illusion and yet profoundly real? We wake up within the dream. We play the game but remember the player. We live the illusion but with eyes wide open. Because the goal was never to escape the world, but to see it clearly, to pierce the veil, not with rejection, but with reverence, to realize that Maya is not a trap. It is a teacher, that every moment, joy or pain, is the field expressing itself. And behind it all, within it all, is you. The one who observes, the one who knows, the one who dreams. You're not just watching the universe, you are watching yourself through the eyes of eternity. And the illusion, it's beautiful, once you stop mistaking it for truth. What if the final frontier is within? Not a distant galaxy, not the subatomic maze, but the silent observer and behind your eyes. The deeper we peer into the fabric of reality through particle accelerators, sacred mantras or the silent pause between thoughts, one truth returns like an echo. There is no out there without an in here, and as science unravels the edge of the known, and the Vedas whisper truths forgotten, but never lost, a new possibility begins to emerge, that the universe is conscious not metaphorically, but fundamentally, and that your awareness is not an accident, but the very key to reality itself. In the halls of theoretical physics, Something astonishing is being whispered, that perhaps space-time is not fundamental, that particles may emerge from entangled information, that the universe at its root might be a hologram, a projection from deeper non-local realms. This is not mysticism, it's math. Black hole thermodynamics, quantum entanglement and string theory all hint at one conclusion. Reality is encoded, structured, Rule-bound, yet strangely fluid, and encoded into what? Information. Not as abstraction, but as the substrate of existence. And in the Vedic view, long before Planck, Bohr or Wheeler, the Upanishads declared, from the unmanifest all things arise, in it they reside, into it they dissolve. The Akasha, not merely sky, but the subtle field from which all emerges, was said to store all impressions, all forms, all possibilities. What science now calls the quantum field, the sages called Brahman, not a being, not a place, but being itself. If reality is information, then what is perceiving it? A mirror cannot reflect itself, a thought cannot think itself, but consciousness Consciousness can witness even its own illusion. Maya, the sacred illusion, is not falsehood. It is artistry, a canvas painted with particles of potential brought to life by the brushstroke of attention. The Chandogya Upanishad whispers, Tattvamasi, you are that, that which you seek, that which gives rise to atoms, emotions, galaxies and gods, is you. Not the ego, not the name, but the witnessing essence behind it. Just as a dream arises within a sleeper, so too this universe may arise within consciousness. And yet Maya remains necessary. For without illusion, there can be no awakening. The dream of a unified theory, Einstein's lifelong pursuit, still haunts modern physics. A single framework that unites quantum mechanics and general relativity, particles and gravity, chaos and symmetry. But perhaps it's not math alone that will bridge the gap. Perhaps the missing piece is the conscious observer. Every quantum experiment reveals the same riddle. The act of observation changes the outcome. Light is a wave or a particle, depending on whether you look. Reality flickers between probabilities and certainties based on awareness. This isn't philosophy, it's experiment. And here's where the Vedas step in, 
not to replace science but to complete it. In Vedantic cosmology, consciousness is the fundamental field. Everything arises within it, not from it. You are not in the universe. The universe is in you. Time flows only one way, or so we think. Entropy, the tendency toward disorder, gives time its arrow. But why does the universe follow this direction? Why was the Big Bang so improbably ordered? Some physicists speculate the universe might be a low entropy simulation, seeded with conditions that allow complexity, life and mind. In the Vedic view, time is cyclical, not linear. Yugas, vast cosmic epochs, flow in spirals, birth, death, rebirth. Even karma operates like entropy. Every action leaves an imprint, a residue, just as every interaction increases disorder unless energy is consciously applied. To act with awareness is to reverse entropy, to choose dharma over chaos. And perhaps that's the real measure of time, not clocks, but consciousness. The evolution of awareness through illusion. If the world is a simulation, then so is your identity. This is not fiction, it is cognitive science. What you call you is a simulation running in a neural network, a constructed model based on feedback, memory and expectation. But here's the twist. Even this simulation is being witnessed by something prior, something that cannot be located in time or space. In the Vedic view, this is Atman, the self beyond self, not personal, not limited, not born, nor dying. Nahamkata, Harikata. I am not the doer, the divine is the doer. When the false self collapses through meditation or near death, deep love or psychedelics, what remains is not void, what remains is infinity. So where does this leave us? On the brink. The borderland where physics meets philosophy, where science bows to silence and where the seeker finally sees that the universe is not a machine, it is a mandala, a living pattern, a recursive code. And the architect? Awareness itself. Not distant, not external, but here, listening, watching, wondering, what am I? This is the final teaching, not in words, but in realization, that the code is you, that the cosmos is you, that Maya is your mirror. And that awakening is not escaping the illusion, but dancing with it, wide awake. Silence, then a breath. The observer is the observed. The dreamer is the dreamed. The code was consciousness all along. If this journey stirred something within you, a question, a truth you're drawn to explore, then let it be a beginning, not an end. The path to understanding the self is the very path that unveils the universe. If this resonated with you, subscribe to Thinker's Journey, like the video if it lit even a single candle in the dark, and share it with those ready to explore the deeper truths of existence and keep going. Because the greatest exploration isn't out there in the stars, it's inward, into the stillness, into the silence, into the source. This illusion isn't something to escape, it's something to awaken within. Until then, stay curious, stay conscious, stay connected. A journey through consciousness, self and the essence of existence. By Thinker's Journey, Tihan.